All right, hello, welcome to my little tour of the cranial nerves um, for chapter 14 um, and the brain chapter in lab. So here we have the view of an inferior view of the brain. We can see this showing the 12 pairs of cranial nerves. It's a little bit hard to see on this um, preserved brain, but what I want you to note is kind of the names and the numbers are listed over here. And other than the last two, um, they go in numerical order. Um, so we have olfactory nerve, optic nerve, ocular motor nerve, trochlear, trigeminal, abducens, facial, vestibular cochlear, glossopharyngeal, vagus, hypoglossal, and accessory. And these are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So those ones are kind of flip-flopped a little bit. When you're learning these nerves, it's kind of nice to know that they are arranged on that underside of the brain in numerical order. So what I always recommend students to do is to come up with a mnemonic. So if you know the mnemonic of the order of the nerves, then when you're looking at a picture, you can count through and find which one is which. So I usually share this one with my students. It says O, 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 to touch and feel, very good velvet, ah, right? Because accessory is 11, hypoglossal is 12, so it really is supposed to be A-H. So O-O-O, to touch and feel, very good velvet, ah, is your mnemonic for remembering the order of these cranial nerves. So now I just wanna go through um, and just do a brief description on um, where these are found and what they do. So cranial nerve number one um, is your olfactory nerves. So I'm gonna try to zoom in a little bit here. So a lot of times what we see on our structures is the olfactory bulb, which in itself technically isn't the olfactory nerves, um, but that's what we can see, on, especially on the sheep brain dissection. They're actually really small and short uh, fibers that run from your nasal mucosa um, up on the superior surface of your nasal cavity through those uh, foramen and your ethmoid bone. Um, and the cribriform plate of your ethmoid bone, and then they synapse into the olfactory bulb. So just know that the olfactory nerves are just these little short ones um, going from your nasal mucosa up through your cribriform plate. And it is purely sensory, and it deals with um, t bringing in olfaction, so sense of smell. Number two is your optic nerves. And this is purely sensory and it's dealing with your vision. So these are the optic nerves that come back off of each eyeball. And one of the key landmarks on the underside of the brain is this X right here called the optic chiasm. And so that's where your optic nerves cross over and half of the information gets sent over to the other half of the brain for processing. So optic nerve is purely sensory for vision. In this next picture, we have three nerves, um, four nerves actually, that we're going to be dealing with movement of your eye muscles. Um, or sorry, three nerves. We already covered optic nerve. It's just a different view there, sorry. So these three nerves, so ocular motor number three, trochlear number four, and abducens number six, these are all nerves that are going to go and innervate these what we call extrinsic eye muscles. We'll be learning those in um, our special senses chapter, but these are the muscles that are responsible for moving your actual eyeball. So when you look up, look down, look left, right, look all around, these muscles here, innervated by these nerves here, are going to move your eyeball. So ocular motor, trochlear, and abducens are all purely motor in that they only move the skeletal muscles, these extrinsic muscles of your eye. Okay, so that's three, four, and six. Here is uh, trigeminal. This is five. So trigeminal is a mixed nerve, which means it has both motor and sensory information. It is the largest of our cranial nerves. It carries lots of information, motor and sensory information to the face and from the face. All right, we already did six was abducens um, for that eye muscle. So now we're on facial nerve, which is number seven. So the facial nerve here we can see innervates. Zoom in a little bit a lot of the um, parts, the superficial regions of the face, superficial distribution of the different branches. You don't need to know the different branches here. You just need to be able to identify that facial nerve is number seven and what its sensory and motor um, distribution is. 
Cranial nerve number eight is your vestibular cochlear nerve, and it is broken up into two parts, the vestibular nerve and the cochlear nerve. And that kind of gives you clues as to what it's going to do. So vestibular cochlear is purely sensory. The cochlear branch here brings in information from your cochlea, which is going for hearing. Your vestibular branch innervates your vestibule, and this is part of your equilibrium. So they fuse together to create cranial nerve number, cranial nerve number eight, which is your vestibular cochlear nerve. We'll be seeing that more in special senses as well. So that's eight. Um, cranial nerve number nine is your glossopharyngeal right here we can see that um, it does have it's a mixed nerve so it has somatic and sensory uh, oh, sorry not somatic sensory and motor um, distribution so make sure you look at your list to get the de descriptions oh, that reflection hard to get that off here we go okay that's your glossopharyngeal then we have our vagus nerve the vagus nerve isn't necessarily the biggest nerve. That was our number five, our trigeminal. But this carries probably the most actual um, action potentials, if you will, because it goes and innervates a lot of your visceral organs in the thoracic and abdominal pelvic cavities. So vagus nerve number 10 carries about 75% of your autonomic um, communications down into your ventral body cavity. So we're going to be seeing a lot more of the vagus nerve when we take a look at chapter 16 in the autonomic nervous system. So it is also a mixed nerve carrying both um, sensory and motor information. Okay. And this last picture is taking a look at your um, hypoglossal and accessory. So accessory is cranial nerve number 11, hypoglossal is cranial nerve number 12. So the accessory is a um, motor uh, nerve. So it's gonna carry uh, motor information to muscles of the palate and the pharynx and your larynx, as well as your sternocleidomastoid and trapezius muscles. They're kind of showing that down here. And then your hypoglossal nerve is motor, and that helps with your tongue musculature. So glossal is a root word that means tongue. And so hypoglossal is kind of the going to come up from the bottom, the underneath side of the tongue. So accessory and hypoglossal are motor in their communications um, to your kind of tongue and neck area. And then you have here um, in the textbook, you have a table showing you the name, the number, the primary function, um, and the innervation. You do not need to worry about the ganglia, the branch, or the foramen when you're learning your cranial nerves. Name, number, your primary function, and innervation. And I do have the cranial nerve list on Blackboard um, in both lecture and lab shell, so take a look at that um, as you are working on your cranial nerve list. Okay, thanks so much. See you next time. Bye!